thank you so much for doing this with us, Kim. We appreciate it. Thank you. And for those of you who might not be familiar, um, Kim is an LA designer. She's been uh, published in many different uh, publications, uh, Architectural Digest, and LA Times, El Decor, and more. Um, she has always put an emphasis on, oh, I also want to say she's a designer and a developer, which I think is so cool. She's very involved throughout the entire process um, of a, a design build project. Um, but she's always put an emphasis on supporting physical health, uh, mental clarity and emotional well-being into her projects, which I think is so important. And I think we're finally coming around to seeing that that is something that we should be doing, but not until very recently has that started to catch on and Kim's been doing it for years. Um, two years ago, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and at that time completely um, isolated herself to work on her healing and her own health. And I think that really brought it home how important it was to put the emphasis on not just making a home beautiful, but also livable and, and comfortable and, um, and inviting and healthy. So that's kind of the, the basis of all of your projects, correct? That's where you start from. Yeah, I mean, I think it starts with the space and you go there and you sort of get a feeling for the space and or who may be living there, if it's a house that we're developing, or if it's going to be a home for a client to really sort of get their, what they wanna have. And I think that during this time of COVID and everything, that we're starting to feel a little bit more about how our house can help us. Do you know, like you're making it look beautiful and you have all this beautiful things in it, but how do we really make our home kind of work for us? How do we have the things that are around us be relatively healthy, that the air is moving, the location is great, you have beautiful plants, but you know, how do you do that? How do you bring that all together? So you said um, when we were talking a little bit the other day um, that we need to give our home intention. Mm -hmm. So talk about that, and and you also said that in what you just said that our homes are are here to take care of us. So giving it intention, how can we help it to do what it should be doing to feed our souls and our health and our emotional well being? Yeah, I think that's such a good. It's a really good question because I think that no matter how beautiful it is, no matter what you put in your house the intention that you give it, like in other words, when you're walking in the foyer, for instance, you're walking in the entrance of your house, there has to be something about it where you can, you're able to be reminded to say, this is my home, I'm safe. You know, whether it be something that smells pretty, um, some water features, we use a lot of water features at the entrance, almost in every house that we've ever done. So as soon as you walk in, you have this water kind of moving um, and you're thinking, oh, it, it just kind of brings you, okay, I'm here. It's funny because I think I've always sort of, or tried to put that kind of an intention in the houses, but I never gave it as much thought as A, when I was sick and I would lay there feeling so crappy and then kind of look around and go, oh, I never realized like how crowded the foyer was. It was full of stuff or, you know, I realized all these little things, even before I got to my beautiful living room were, was an afterthought, you know? And you, you start to realize, wow, what is my intention? Like, what do I want from here? And now we're stuck at home. So it's amazing. So now we're all looking at each other going, oh my gosh, we're walking in and we're saying to ourselves, I'm home, I'm safe, and now I'm stuck. Now it's a prison. <laughs> so now, yeah. now we're completely stuck, right? Now we're completely stuck here. And how does it feel good? Well, I want you guys to notice I have a bartenderess. <laughs> like, you're talking too fast, so I'm making you a drink. Anyway, sorry. I, I need to back up and say, we call this the holistic happy hour. Right. And we were going to have you show us how to make one of your specialty cocktails. And I would still love to have that recipe, but we had so much to talk about that, that we works. decided that there just wasn't time for that. So yeah, but hopefully all of you have I just want to clarify, I can still drink it. Oh, yeah. So that's, I was going to say, everybody, I hope you have your cocktail and we can still sip and, and talk, but we'll we can get that um, that recipe up on the blog later. Thank you. That'll just be safe for another. So back to entrances. I, we were talking about that the other day, and 
I, I mean, that's where you enter the home and that's what sets the intention, right? And right. I think a lot of us don't think a lot about entrances. Yeah, you really don't. I mean, you know that it should be beautiful. And a lot of us, you know, we live in apartments or we live in smaller spaces or you're in the city and you're walking directly into the house. And I have to say that I think when I first started designing, it was, I wanted such an open floor plan that when you walked in, it was sort of, you were right there. And I've been thinking more and more about that. I was like, you know, I need a block from whoever it is at the door, even just like vibe wise. I don't necessarily want people to be right there the mailman or who knows what, for to be standing right there, well, I just need a minute. And I think that that's something that I started to add, obviously, more into the design, was to having a proper foyer. I mean, it takes square footage. You know, we're from Venice, so it was hard to find in the beginning, but that's also where plants come in, which is another huge part of our work and also a big part of utilizing something um, to add light, movement, you know, green, that kind of stuff. So for someone who is walking into, you open the door and you're in, there's no barrier. Yes. I kind of don't know about that. I mean, how do you guys feel? How do our participants feel? You know, you feel, I mean, Alex, do you have a chance in your home? Like, are you, my Alex, sorry. Are you able when you're opening up the door? To, what do you, I mean, are you immediately in your living room or how does it work in your place? My house before a remodel had a slight foyer. Now you're kind of like a little bit just right into like, this. Your, daughter, your daughter's escaping. <laughs> She's leaving. She's out. No. Gone. Um, but yeah, for some reason, there is a slight pause. Do you, I mean, do you mind it or is it fine? Is it like, for instance, then you would use hedges in your yard? I mean, what are you saying about the foyer? For that you, used to I mean, be my foyer. That used to be my pet peeve, walking into a living room. Right, isn't that funny? Then I got my house remodeled and I lost my little itty bitty foyer, mm -hmm. but everything opened up. So I lost something, but I gained more. Oh, I we're going to mudroom now. Is that what everyone's talking about? The mudroom? Right. Okay. But I don't know if the mudroom is allowed to be at the front door. Oh, it has to be in the oh, back. Yeah. That's usually the back, like coming off the garage or. Yeah, it seems like it should be closer to the kitchen sort of area and then you're dropping all your stuff off. But Kim, you talk about the entryway and a hotel lobby. Yeah, I know. It's very true. You're right. That's what's, really that, what's that connection? Yeah, no, it's true. You know, when you're going on vacation and so you're on a plane and you're a wreck and then you get on whatever, God knows, some sort of a taxi or another, and then you get in this beautiful location. And as soon as you walk in, you're immediately reminded that you're in a resort. You know, you're just like, oh, here I am. That little click, that little piece. And I guess what Alex is reminding me, what what we talk about a lot is being able to walk into a space and say, oh, oh, you know, I'm here, you know, it's not a mess. I mean, it would be really nice to have somebody terrific hand you a cucumber martini when you walk in the door or a glass of champagne <laughs> or even nothing, or just like, you know, the cookies of their house, but just walking in and being reminded that that's this beautiful space and it's yours and it's quiet and it's time to rest. It's time to reset because you've come home. And you put an emphasis on bringing resort living into your residential home projects. Yeah, I think, I mean, don't that reason. You that? yeah, don't you feel that yourself now? Like just, just now that we're all stuck at home, I mean, I want to say we're stuck at home, but if you look around, you start to ask yourself, how can I bring a little bit of that? How can I enjoy this time at home? So the idea that you can make it feel like it's a resort and that it's really comfortable um, and envelops you with peace or it just, we talked a little bit earlier about um, smells because potentially you could walk in and you could have a candle going or it, just the, the act of lighting the candle as you walk in, just going mm -hmm. okay, in the house, this is time for me to, this is my- And day. why should you only feel that way when you go on vacation? We should be yeah, totally. taking care of ourselves and, and right. bringing our heart rates down and bringing our relaxation up on a daily basis, right? I mean, yeah, we're spending so much time at home. What is it, like 98% of our time is, is, in, is indoors. So you start to ask yourself, how can I do that? If I'm going to be in home, if I'm going to be here, it should smell nice. It should be healthy. There should be wonderful airflow. And I should be giving a lot of time and energy into creating the space, especially when I first walk in the door. And, you know, still having like a mess room, like my clothes, you know, having the area that is your sort of jungle space, but remembering which, as soon as I walk in, it's here, I'm at home, I'm fine. And then you can go to the different, you can go to different rooms. Hi. Um, Abby Stone 
has a great question, which is this mental pause moment when we walk into the house mm -hmm. is now actually a logistical pause moment as we're transitioning from the outside world and we need to shed clothes and shoes that may be containing germs. Can you talk about this transitional phase? Yes, that's really smart. I mean, right? Because, and I think, you know, before COVID, I'll say that I would ask people when I first met them, um, okay, so let's go to your front door. So what happens? Are you guys the kind that take your shoes off? And if they are those kind of people that take their shoes off, where do they put their shoes? Because a lot of times they go, oh, right. Or we're going to be designing you a new home. So talk to me. How, what is the first thing? You walk in, what do you do? Are you a carrier of groceries? How can we beeline faster for the kitchen? So it's exactly that. Like, and now you're talking about COVID. So where do we put our shoes? And what kind of material can we use that we place our shoes on? And how often do we even clean that? I mean, back in the day, none of us thought about this, I don't think, right? I mean, now we're all thinking about it. We never did before. I don't think. I mean, maybe you guys did, but I sure didn't. My husband's here. Come say hi, honey. And Genevieve is saying she agrees that mud rooms will be a necessity. And yeah, it's the same, it's the same concept. It's we're having to disrobe and Lysol everything. And so we need a space to do that. When is that gonna stop? And is it it's probably changed us forever. So all those oh here's my honey. So, um, <laughs> thank you. So, um, a refreshment. Oh, God, too much. The, um, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, my love. So, um, I think that's true, and it's probably going to change design forever. When we first came to Venice, the houses were small, and oh, they still are, but I was always surprised that there wasn't a pantry because I really find the use of a pantry as something just, so, I mean, honestly, so useful, but we don't purchase things like we used to, you know, you don't buy, a, and this is how I used to think, right? Well, we don't buy a lot of cans. We don't buy a lot of stuff. We're fresh food buyers, right? And you go to the pantry and it's really just all that stuff that you don't need. The juicer, the weirdo X blender that your mom gave you after the one that you got, but you can't get rid of it. And all that stuff is in your pantry. Now we have to start thinking about where am I going to put all that toilet paper? Where do you right. stuff go? Where, <laughs> where, 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 where are we going to hide everything? Oh, yeah. You never know when this might happen again. This takes us to earthquakes. So let's move on from the entry in the mudroom. Talk a little about designing homes for every activity, such as, you know, all, all the activities we all do on a daily basis, work, play, school, um, con relaxation, meditation yeah, I, areas. I think maybe potentially what you're asking maybe is this idea of an open floor plan and where's it going in the future? Because <laughs> we've always done these massive open floor plans, which I love, because I love, I think we all do, right? You're in the cooking and you're making it look great. Everybody's in the room and you can see the living and you're watching a movie and the kids are right there doing homework. And now I believe that's still a massive thing, but God, we really need our space. I mean, now we're stuck with our husbands, don't let them hear me, or people that we're with, or Julia, and you're kind of wishing you had kind of like a little room, like you're sort of, and the kids are too. And it's this moment of saying to yourself, where can we put everybody? What does that look like? And how do you live in those spaces? And I have an 11 year old, for instance, and he's got a great room, has a desk in it, and, but I don't have the computer in there because I don't know what he's going to be on. So I need that open floor plan for myself that he's in there, right? And I could kind of, no matter where I am, I could see his screen. And that is really, really important to me. So, but he still needs his space nowadays. So without a computer, he can read or whatever he does. God knows. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, that's just one of those things about how you're going to live in these, in these different spaces. How do you, in your space, do you have children? Who has kids? Have, yeah. I have a very small space and I have two girls still home with me. I have four kids, but I have two that are still home. And it's a struggle because we don't have a lot of space. Yeah. And you know, it, it kind of is what it is, but we, I mean, this goes into another topic. We respect each other and we, right, you know, we, yeah, we just, we are aware. And like right now I'm in my room Mm -hmm. And my daughter is in the living room and I just was like, okay, I'm going to be in here. You can come and if you want to kind of see what we're talking about, come on in, but just, you know, keep your music down and mm -hmm. you do. 
That's interesting because that's also how I had to get into my clothes because yeah, to get away, <laughs> right? Because and our the way I think we've all lived is where we say things like, "Well, but I've got my iPad, you know, my iPad, or I've got my portable computer, and I've got my laptop," and I, and you don't really care. You never really thought you needed it. You know, oh, I don't really need a filing cabinet, or I don't really need a space. I could just walk over there. But now we're in here together, and we're saying, "Oh, I kind of wish the dining room was separate." Because then I could sit there and work with everybody and just kind of close the doors for a second. And the kids are thinking the same thing. So right. this really, all of this is going to really change a lot, I believe, as we move forward in design. As designers, there's no way that this will not affect every aspect. And it brings it going into wellness. We realize how important this is. We're all freaking out. We're all really stressed out. I mean, we're pretty stressed out. I mean... I'm lucky and we're all lucky, but you can always step outside your home, try to get a breath. You know, nature is incredibly important. I mean, getting outside and getting any amount of fresh air. So us designing spaces, instead of just looking at concepts like a big backyard, having little moments, little bumped out moments where you can just step out and just go, Oof, and just get a little bit of sun on your legs. You know, just, it's amazing how these little bits of information is going to be changing us, I think, the way that, and we have to think about it. Going back to your question before about intention, right? Because if right. it's intention, you have to say, well, what happens if we do have another corona? I'm designing this home. I need to really think about these things. These are little things I, I never thought about before. What if, if? We're, Yeah, if we're in a position where we can't leave the home, mm -hmm. that's going to really impact the way you think about laying it out and designing it, of course. Yes. And, and flexibility, like, you know, because you don't want to live like that. You're not going to be like, well, I need a panic room now or something. I mean, <laughs> right? but you, there are moments where you're going to think to yourself, well, what should I do? What will it look like? I know what I didn't like. I know that I couldn't get outside. I knew I should have had little patios or I really, really wish I could rely on my AC um, or my HVAC system. There's been so much information about us not cleaning our filters and et cetera, and the crud that is just going through. And yes. A heat wave. So now we're relying on that. And who knows what we're breathing? It's, it's the air inside is worse than, you know, New Jersey. <laughs> I know. It's frightening. And we, most people just don't think about that at all. It's something yeah. that I just, because being in this industry, I do think about. And it's, it's very, yeah, it's frightening, but there are people and there are innovators out there who are doing things to really change that. And so let's talk a little bit about wellness in the home. So, I mean, all of us can't afford to have a home spa. Right. Or, or well, a designated a space. Or bathroom, right? Like even a small home. I mean, it's really your bathtub and you start to look at it. I mean, I have to tell you that when I looked back and one of my bathrooms, I was looking at it and I was like, how old are those salts? Like I didn't even look yes. at it. Never, it's like really cute. It was like a cute little thing. And I thought, what's in there? I opened it up. It was like a thud. It was like this crazy, like this weird sculpture, this forgotten thing. And you, and you start to say, what is, and I'm going to sound a little trippy, but it's kind of like stagnant energy in a way, right? Like that space just stopped. And if you had a, you have, if you had a plant in there, for instance, you have to tend to that plant. You have to care for that plant. So you're going in there and going, oh, and you, you sort of have to look around. That's what you were saying, again, about intention. It's living in the space, but you're really looking around like, you know, they have the Marie Kondo, right? Get things out that don't bring you joy. But I'm, clut I'm a cluttery collector. And this makes me feel really safe and comfortable. Me being around my stuff and my books, I'm like, okay, I got something to read. I, this is my space. And it's the same thing anywhere you go in any of the rooms. So going back to wellness, it's what makes you well. How is it that when you got really want to go, oh, is it a bath? Is it a room? Is it a, does it have to be toasty? What is it exactly that you need? And then how do I or any designer look at you and go, okay, in your bathroom? You know, like there's one thing makes me nuts is when you have one of those gorgeous bathrooms that you photograph and they got all this glass. I totally do not want to be seen naked in this glass. I don't feel safe. I walk in, I'm like, oh, like how do I cover it? How do I get that frosted glass, you know? And all sharp edges. Yes, you have to really, and you really just have to go. And some people will look at that and think, oh my God, this is spa heaven to me. What does it look like when you design for your clients for wellness? In an ideal world, like let's just pick, it's like an ideal scenario. This is the well, wellness. I have to say that an ideal scenario is going to be, and this is incredibly selfish and absolutely awful, but it's when I'm able to design, as you were saying about developing, and developing homes is one I'm able to just complete design 
purely with no input. And that is me closing my eyes and imagining. If I had nothing but absolute space and I could create something that is perfect and not worry about, say, money or anything like that and just go to town. Granted, this is incredibly selfish and lucky that I'm able to do that. Like I have a house right now that I'm working on and there's such a huge space. It's bigger than practically my entire second floor of my house. And it's just the spa area and you have a plunge pool and the water that goes in the plunge pool, are you ready? You can drink it. I'm not saying you can drink it because you want to drink it, but that that's what's in your skin, the biggest organ in your body. So you have this, all these little ideas you can do. I have that and you guys at um, Snyder have this amazing bed, this float bed. Have you guys been on this? I know you guys work work there, but zero body bed. Oh it's my god, the zero is great. body yeah. bed. Have you guys played on that thing? It's amazing. amazing. I haven't done it yet, but tell us about it. It's in, it's truly oh, incredible. It is incredible. So so the idea is that you want to lay. You're laying on this board, and it's kind of a little bit like what? And then the the board drops, and you poof, you kind of float. So you're just and you're completely relaxed and comfortable. It is so breathtaking. Who is that? Is there a person? Daxi, come and say hi, Papa. My son is trying so hard to say hi. Do you guys mind? Careful of water. Oh, coming in. Morning, babe. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> We're talking about um, what, makes, what makes your back from a spa. My bathroom isn't a spa. It's big though. <laughs> yeah, big, but it's not a spa. You have a really a strangely big bed. Well, uh, big. I recall that in our old house, oh, your, that's, that's true. your bathroom was the size of my room. <laughs> that's true. So when then, we were designing the house, Dax is bringing up a good point. When we were designing our house um, and I was building the walls, one day Dax came, Dax, by the way, D-A-X, Dax came walking in his bedroom and the, it was just all the, the plain walls were just barely up. And he, he walks in, he goes, which one's my bedroom? I go, oh, that one over there. And I'm figuring where my big tub is gonna go and all this, and Dax gets a measuring tape and it's almost the same size as his bedroom. <laughs> so I actually had to have Mauricio move the wall so we could, I, I was like, wait, really? I didn't even look. I'm like, oh, you're a kid. You don't even need, you don't even need, a, you need a bed. You don't even have any clothes. It was so funny. <laughs> so then Mauricio made, I had to push the wall and make my bathroom smaller, but I still had <laughs> I had a bathtub we ended up getting, um, which had jets on it and little lights. I got it as a sample. Oh my God, yeah, your bathtub has jets on it. Remember how great that was? That was it's such like a, a good bed. That was a spa. And yeah. that's another thing, right? One of the things that makes, I think, wellness or making a space amazing is the, the absolute ability to control the elements. Lighting, I don't think anyone pays enough attention, besides the lighting that's on your windows and getting beautiful light, but also having light that you can hit a button or you have dimmer switches everywhere. My bathtub had these unbelievable like chroma lights, which at the time I was like, yeah, well, I don't get it. Oh my God. We have those too. We were talking the other day about circadian lighting. And I think that is going to be something that every home, it might take a while, but every home will have that eventually. It's, it's incredible for what it does for your stress levels and your again, your emotional well-being and mental clarity. I don't think we pay enough attention. When you think about people that live in Washington and in England and they actually have to have special lights put in because they're sort of sad. But they, I think they call it sad, don't they? It's something like you're sad. Oh, you're like right? the, the, like the wintertime blues. Yes, the wintertime yeah. blues. And, yeah, and even though we live in the sun, it's a bit much. Like, it's really like you're in the desert and it's yeah. just too much. So trying to, I just have to go like, wait, right? It's just too much. And you don't even think about how much this affects you. If I'm trying to study or I'm trying to really concentrate on a design or thinking, and if all the lights are glaring, which they do all the time, beautiful big windows, we're infamous for our floor to ceiling windows, but it still brings in light. So you really, really need to invest in and even find different ways of, of window coverings that you're able to constantly control. It can't be just all on or all off. There has to be some sort of a dimmer. Uh, a, a, if not a dimmer, then a perfect type of shade or even plantings outside, planting right outside the window. So as I'm looking out the window, it's beautiful and green. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, that's just, I mean, honestly, the lighting and the control of lighting, circadian rhythm. I, I was reading this fantastic thing recently where they were saying that they were able to control the lighting in the house 
So the guy is walking around the house and the lights just slowly dim throughout the day until the evening. But then he said that if he's going out that night, he has it reversed at like six o'clock and it becomes like sun. And he actually said that it feels like he could go out right then. Which is that there's there's a company who's developing a whole package for the home that's all of that. It's um, air filtration, it's water filtration, it's circadian lighting. You can have um, essential oils burst into the home. Mm -hmm. What is it? Devos or something, right? Like Delos, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's a wonderful thing, and you're able to control it on your phone, which I think you can do with your Nest. You know, the Nest, which is what you're using for your. Um, mm -hmm. The same thing with temperature. You know, yes. it's another thing, right? Because if you want it cooler, you want it light. You know, in, in the daytime, I'm super busy running around. It's a little bit warmer. When I go to bed, it better be freezing because I want to feel all those blankets. I like mm -hmm. to have that weight and all the softness. I, I honestly, I like to cuddle up with a lot of pillows. My man, I don't want it to be all stuffy so that the house gets freezing cold at night. I'm backing up a little bit. I'm looking at some questions on chat. Um, Cameron is asking, what do you think about small bedroom and large open areas? Meaning, Cameron, can we put her on? Hi. Hi, Mama. How are you? Tell us what you mean. Great. Well, I'm just thinking, you know, if you have a certain amount of space, um, where is your head at when you think of, you know, um, allocating space to a bedroom as in terms of, or, or rather a huge, large, lofty area where you can like see your children and have a big space for everyone, you know. Or to prioritize this space. Yeah, are you prioritizing space in your room or in the big open areas? Me personally, I feel like I don't spend as much time in my own room and I'd rather just have a huge open space to share. But I know other people really take a lot of comfort in being in their room, take solace there, go there to meditate. So I just, I don't know what your you. medium is there. No, Cameron, I think you're right. Because I think um, there is a lot of effort in people saying the bedroom is as big as, you know, it's a 1500 square foot bedroom. And honestly, I shrink up bedrooms and make massive closets because we never have enough space in the closet. So you'll look at the room and even though we've designed the house and you're thinking, but what am I going to put in there? I don't want to, you know, going back to the intention originally, the bedroom is for sleeping and for making babies and for whatever you're doing. But I, I honestly, I just don't, it's not where you're supposed to be working necessarily, unless that's how you live, like you say. And I, and if you're living in a space, I want to be able to have those little areas that are specific to that. That's the intention. This is my space to work. Therefore, I have my correct pens in the area. I've got the, all my stuff is ready to plug in. My bedroom is for sleeping. So that's over there, you know? So that's what you're saying, I think, right? Can yeah, I absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I mean, personally, don't feel like I need such a huge, large bedroom, but if I was designing a house, I would want to know if that would be, you know, kosher to build a house like that. Um, you know, because I just wanted to understand what the rest of the people feel about smaller bedrooms, but larger open spaces. I, I think, I think that A, if the closet's big, if you have, it depends on the luxury, it depends on the space. If I could have more room and like, I never feel like anyone has a closet big enough, number one. If I had a lot of space up there, I'd make two bathrooms. So his and hers, hers and hers, his and his, they go off. I, I want to be able to brush my teeth alone and do all my business over there and kind of meet in the middle in a bed. No, actually, when I, went to the, when I went to the Greystone Mansion, um, they had they, they had rooms. There was an entire room, which was your dressing room, and they had a small bed in it, like for the in the children's rooms. And that was so your closet was a bedroom, and you just had a bed in it. And I thought that was amazing. I was like, that's what I need. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if we think, and now mind you, if I was designing for you, if I was designing for Cameron, the first question is, how are you going to live? We started with the foyer. We're going into the living room. It's I a, a tech individual. Con. Yes, and you go in, and it has to be. I mean, otherwise, why did you even talk to a designer? Otherwise, you could just pick up anything. But the first question is how Cameron is saying, I like to have a big open space. She wants to have parties or whatever it is. That she wants a big space, and she wants to go to her little nest, maybe. You know, why should I design a home with a big bedroom when my real estate could be used in, in, a, in a multifunctional space? We have a lot of tech clients and um, people who like to bring work home. You know, a lot of people, work home meaning 
hey, let's go to my house. We'll have some drinks. We'll hang out and we'll do some creative. We'll do some creative work here. We'll get some gamers here. We'll have some guys talking. People, people working together. And they have the big open space and a kitchen. They've got a wonderful like guest chef or whatever it is, or cooking and a friend cooking. Your mom cooking and everyone is there creating. And then there's a big, um, you know, screen. You know, it's this way. This the open space is as Karen's saying. Like the open spaces allow you to have more flexibility, and then you can climb up to your nest or whatever. But I still want a big closet. I swear to God, I don't think closets can ever be big enough. And maybe that's bad. I don't know. But there's summer, winter. And then there's shoes. Like, what do you do? <laughs> shoes and bags. There's never enough room for that. One thing so, that's been interesting oh. about um, the real estate market since the last recession. Oops. Huge, great rooms. And Kim has always complimented great rooms with intimate spaces, which seem really critical right now. Yeah, you mean like, can you say that again? Because if I'm not the only one, did, you kind of froze a little bit. Froze up a little bit. Yeah, say so that again. I'm gonna stop, I'll stop my video so that it'll be clear. Um, so, you know, post last recession, everybody wants this great room, like what Cameron's alluding to, just this huge wallless space. And now we're trying to work from home and teach from home and work out from home. We need interior walls all of a sudden, desperately. But what Kim has always done is um, she's created these open spaces because they're so pleasing to us and she's complemented them with smaller offices or smaller areas where we can do these, where we can work or learn in peace with, with walls because we actually do really need walls. I, that's so true. We don't even think about that anymore. I swear to you, and even in offices, remember? Like the big thing was walking into an office and everyone's like, hurry, hurry, hurry. it's just a bunch of people and a bunch of heads and everyone's trying to hide. And then they got phone booths. So now it's, how do we make these individuals? We really need to build it, work together, collaborate. God, we all need connections so bad, but I don't know if I have to be on top of everybody all the time. Like my kids, like they need space to even just think for themselves. That's a good point. You know, we had done that one house. I don't know. Remember that there was a space underneath. There was very little room there. But I really felt like there was a place kind of to hide, like you say. And we have one of our houses, I think it was over on Millwood in Venice. And it was just underneath the staircase. And we really built that out. And we were, I was very proud of it, even in photographs, because I remembered thinking, you know, usually you just kind of put a plant there or just kind of whatever, some kind of art piece. But, you know, you really need to use those places. When I go there now to visit um, the people that are there, you know, there is incredibly creative, um, family and they are just in there they're just plugging in and they're they're working they're creating they're writing and i'm so happy about that to have those little spaces you need it is that any of the photos you guys sent me that i could share or oh god <laughs> yeah, that's okay just checking you, know, you can share the um two-story pantry with people because that has some private spaces upstairs thing you guys might have that photo that house i was saying when i was being selfish um one of the things which I, which is interesting as a design, this is going to trip out on design right now, but um, it's a lovely house. It's over in the Palisades that we're doing now. Um, and it's really amazing. But, you know, it's a bigger house. And all of a sudden, in my mind's eye, as I'm walking through it, I feel like it's a little bit, I don't want to say dark, but I'm like, where'd nature go? It feels like in the center on such a big house, where am I able to grab it? Look at that. So what I did here oh, is wow. that this is a two-story pantry. And it's a grow room upstairs where the gentleman is reading his magazine. So you're able to take a spiral stair and then go upstairs into a grow room. I mean, that room will like the rain in that room. It's like straight up an outdoor room in the middle. Beautiful. Of and it really brings in like so much light, which I'm excited about. But you know, this is interesting. And I'm curious what other people think about this. The kitchen for the size of this house on your imagination seems really small because you're thinking, that's weird. That's kind of a small kitchen for uh, such a big house. But the kitchen continues on the underbelly of the uh, pantry. There's a full-on situation going on back there. And this speaks again to us having these open floor plants and my whatever about, I don't want to see a refrigerator in my living room. So the refrigerator is inside there, what I'm calling the pantry. Can you dig what I'm saying? So it doesn't feel like a clankety-clank working kitchen. It's like part of an environment. So then I also have the table, you're able to sit down and, and hang out and you're communicating with all of your friends. And, but the kitchen is working over there. And I hope 
in a really pretty way. And as an added note, it has all that glass, so it's able to bring me light in the center of the room, in the center of the house, excuse me. And all that green, that's just, that's so soothing. I mean, let's hope that the person that, that has this house is gonna have a green thumb. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be a bunch of brown. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what? <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, so that's just an idea about how we're looking at space a little bit differently. And again, now that I've done this, you start saying, well, where do I put all that toilet paper now? Like, where am I going to put all this? I mean, the storage. I mean, think about what, this was crazy. I, I, how much is that going to change what we're doing? Yeah. You know, it's crazy. So you looking at some of my notes that we talked about the other day. Um, you were saying that you're noticing, and I've, I've started to see it a little bit too, a trend um, moving away from those cold contemporary spaces mm -hmm. to more what you're calling warm contemporary that has more of a feminine kind of vibe. Let's talk about that for a minute. Well, this, I think is interesting in relation to what a man and a woman like when they walk into a house. A lot of work started, because I'm self-taught, a lot of work started when I would go to these open houses and I would be like, this is kind of so clean and nice, and but I kind of didn't really, I don't know, I didn't really feel like I wanted to make babies in those houses. Mm -hmm. And then the guy would be, most guys would walk in and kind of go like, it's great, you know, I mean, it's perfect, it looks, you know, and I think, that's where Mabusi and I started to really get it, where it was sort of masculine and feminine going together, where I would look at it and say, that looks really nice, but we gotta soften up those walls. And we started doing the plaster, which we're known for, or the light wasn't quite right. The windows were always small. And we started to, even though we're in Venice, we do floor to ceiling and everybody would say, my God, why are you right up against you know, you can go to the city and the guy's like, why are you doing that? You're like five feet away from your neighbor. And I'm like, I don't care. It's green. And it looks like dirt. And I'm happy that I feel like I'm grounded. I'm, you know, and guys really resonated with it and the steel windows. So there's an element of the masculinity, but there's all those girly bends. And I don't want to say it's girly because it sounds ridiculous, but all of those bells and whistles, right? Oh my gosh, the closet. Oh my God, there's a pantry. <gasps> Look at this cute room underneath here. Oh, I didn't even, and girls or women are running around. I think I'm like they could see all this cuteness and the guy just goes it's clean it's or and i don't want to sound so pink and blue because that is ridiculous i'm actually talking about people and how they resonate with a space and how they think i could be in here i used to always say the same thing i want a pottery barn mom and a couple of fantastic gay guys to walk in here and go i love this house if you could get both right you know what i mean and both yeah. of them oh my god i can live here and that was something that was very very interesting in relation to staging in relation to putting furniture. I mean, look at these guys right here holding on to yeah. them. <laughs> it was a big move. You know, it was an extremely masculine move. And if you look around, it's actually a very, very masculine space. But there's, and it's hard to see in this photo, there's a lot of macrame that I put all over the table. And there's a lot of candles and yep. you can see that in there. And then, the, and then of course, there's always more, uh, more greenery. So and all wood, yes. you're bringing natural elements in and the high ceilings, and you really get this feeling of space, and um, I think, and then, you know, and again, looking at, this is such a pretty room, I love to look at this, I'm really happy about this, and it it's was gorgeous, cool. really, and it's so, it was something, I called it a man, um, Knowledge Bennett, and Knowledge Bennett is an artist, and he came, and I said, you know, I want you just to do it up, and he brought so much incredibly strong art, I was so afraid, I didn't, I, was, I wasn't sure just to give it up like that and have someone come in and do it. But I mean, look at that. It's just such a strong element. It makes me really happy to see that. And it might not turn anyone on. And, but you know, the people who are coming in feel like, oh, like, you know, it's got a little personality. It's doing, yes. you know, and no one's, a, you know, it's a little bit kind of groovy. That's the right word. It's a big personality, but it's not intimidating. It's warm and inviting. Yeah. I think that's well, also the plants, I think, right? Yes. I mean, it has a lot to do with um, the plantings that are in there. Um, and this is also Venice. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. I love this one. I really do. I really, really do we, love this space. Do we have any more images of this home to show, Jen? I don't know how to do it. Do I do that? Or who's Jen? Jen Whitmer. 
We have some of the house next door. Kim designed two. Okay. <laughs> Let's just put a couple more photos up because they're so gorgeous. That one's an outdoor dining room. It's like an indoor outdoor dining room. Oh, that's a cool thing. I don't know how to do it from my computer, so don't ask me. Jen's gonna do it. Jennifer. Where's Jen? Oh, there she is. Muted, but she's smiling over there. <laughs> she's like, I'll find it. It's Jen. I don't know if we're able to do it. I don't know if we can. Um, I can put I'm on just... the iPad and hide, hang it up. She's on it. Let me see. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh yeah. Well, this is a this is a rendering. It's not quite it. This is this is another house. This is the one on Amalfi, and it's me playing around a little bit with stones, which we're having come in from Mexico. Oh, oh, there's a there's a mystery. <laughs> oh, she's oh, right there. looking at all the the third photo. This house is so gorgeous. I'm so proud of this. I cannot wait for this. So many elements of uh, wellness is going in this house. We're doing a lot with water filtration. We're working with so many different elements in this house. It's 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 sick. Wow. It's healthy. <laughs> it's super yeah, it's not sick. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. There's the. I think we wanted to show. This one's lovely. You know, can you see the staircase over there in the corner? Sort of. Right, the left side of the screen. It's like a little stair. It has this really sinewy look. When we first did that, it was very gunk, gunk, gunk. And I went to Mauricio and I need, I need some hips in this house. There is no hips and boobies in here at all. So we ended up taking a little bit and he ended up carving out the staircase so that it just, it just did this soft little turn and a lot of plantings. This house is so beautiful. I really love this house. It's on uh, Walk Street in Venice. And then it was parquet floors. Um, the, these were a lot of really big decisions to do um, in selling homes at the time, getting into development as a, women, as a woman and saying, I don't want it to be white. Remember those days when they used to say when you're developing homes, use white tile, keep everything open. So anybody, I didn't, I had each, each little area was really telling a story about who would be living in the house and kind of the way that they would live. And people could feel it. Like this is who lives here, they would say. And it was really nobody. I would have book collections on imaginary people, like a crazy person. But I put a lot of energy in um, antique stores and things to sort of layer the home so it feels not necessarily decoratory more. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is what I think this is what you're talking about, right, Alex? Yeah, this is beautiful. These are these itty bitty lots where a huge part of Kim's work is strategically placing these disappearing walls and these windows so that this house is completely breathing, whereas probably the original house on it was 900 square feet. Right, Kim? Yeah, and that was something, and this house is like two houses, so this was the breezeway between them. So I closed one wall of it um, for the winter, but most of the time you leave it open, all that, you know, really just looking at things like Mexican uh, grass, and all that Mexican bamboo and stuff, when the wind blows, it's just this beautiful feathery little moment that just gives life and it just feels so good. This is, this is the resort we're talking about. And this could yeah. be, you know? and I know that this looks like it's like, how is, how do I get this in my apartment or how, oh yeah, well, but there are ways. I mean, there's, app, if you have to look at each space and say, okay, I need you to be my place of concentration. The light is wrong. The desk actually doesn't feel right here. And you have to go through all those little steps, right? To be able to give your space exactly what you need to give you that feeling, whatever that feeling might be. I mean, that's what Cameron was saying too. Mm -hmm. Oh. Look at this crazy staircase. Look at, it's just the bringing the outside in is just so beautiful. We're well, probably glass, you know, we're having a real, um, it's really working with glass and glass mm -hmm. is incredible material. It really, and then, I mean, the amount of time and energy that I spend on landscaping is, I mean, I think, I think if I wasn't doing this, I'd be a landscaper because I, I do so much work with landscaping. You can't tell there, but. Beautiful. It's, it's about the intention, I think. That's what, I think that's what we're talking about a little bit. Yeah, back to the intention. Yeah. What does this house do? How can it make me feel good? How does that conversation go when you're starting on a project with, with your clients? How do, you, how do you get to the bottom of what they really want? Especially if you're dealing with someone who's 
they have, they know what they want, but they can't convey it. You know, they're not from a design point of view. So how do you draw that out? I think there's a little bit, I mean, I don't, I, it sounds kooky, but there's without a doubt, there's an element of intuition in this. There's a way that even though I'm, I have a lot of person, I have a lot of personality. I'm a big person. I'm listening. I really pay attention. I really listen. And I feel like when I'm going into the space and I feel you and I'm going, so do you take your shoes off at the door? And inevitably like, or it's a couple. And then someone said, uh, I'd like to. Okay. So let's just say, so you, that's how you want to live. You want to take your shoes off. Well, I do, but I never really did it before. I, I don't really. Okay. So, you know, let's think about it. So you start that early. Actually, I start from the driveway. You're starting from the very beginning. You've driven here. Where are you parking your car? Are you the person that parks in the back? Do you need to have your car covered? The reason is because that's going to bring us into the home and that brings us to that first step into the house. Do you park in the back or do you park in the front? First question, I park in the front. Okay, so you're never gonna really use that garage. Well, no, I thought about using it as a den. Okay, so you're parking, oh. right? I'm not kidding, this happens all day long, it's Venice. And so you're gonna park right there and you're walking in. So this is your walkway. Is It's going directly up and I don't like that. I want a little meandering path before you get to the door. Little things like this, I'll say. Now you've gotten to the entrance. So here you are. So you've walked in, where's your coat going? Like, are you, are you wearing a jacket? Is it, are you that neat that you want to really be able to Mr. Rogers it and kind of walk over there? And you, you literally are getting into these little nitty bitties. Do you need a place to rest your phone? I like to leave my phone. I would love to leave my phone at the door. God, I wish I could. Okay, well then we know we need a USB port and not on the ground. You need to have it figured out. So it's right there and you can, everything has to be easy. As soon as you walk in, especially, because it immediately goes, if you're already ticked off and you're already annoyed by the time you got to your front door, how do you transition that into getting into peace into your, into your space? How do you do that? So now you've walked into the space and it sounds really anal, but these things, I look at the room. Well, we could easily carve you out a little foyer right here. We'll give you like this little moment. We'll give you a little, I dream of genie kind of wall here or something. So the light is still coming through and gives you a moment, you know, just an energetic feel into the house and a place to hang your shoes or put your shoes in. Then my next question always, how much do you cook? Mm -hmm. How much do you cook and how do you cook? And really almost everybody is cooking fresh. They're going often to the grocery store. They're getting um, fresh vegetables that always seem to go bad. They're always, I don't know why the vegetables always go bad. I said, you know, so you need more refrigeration. Okay, let's get you another refrigerator over here. This is your working area. Do you like open floor plans? And that's going to start changing like we talked about earlier. Are we going to want these separate dining rooms, which I got to tell you, I think they're coming back. They know a little separate moment because a dining room could also be a guest room one day or it could be a hundred things, who knows, but it's that flexibility, having a wall, having a door to close. Anyway, so that's the kind of thing, step by step, I go in there and then we look at a lot of images. Then it's just all about, and thank the Lord for Pinterest. I have no idea how we did anything without Pinterest. Pinterest is so bomb. Yeah, it is. Right? I mean, honestly, it's just so surreal to have someone say, well, send me your Pinterest. What Pinterest? You could just send them anything and they can look at it and share, give you photos. I mean, and then you just go, oh my God, this is amazing. I just got a Pinterest from a client. Um, her daughter said she wanted to start a Pinterest. Her, the woman wants nothing but organic material. I want it really hippie and I want all this stuff and I did all this bunch of beautiful pieces so happy my daughter wants to show you her pinterest the entire thing is neon neon everything i just took one look at that and i'm like what she wants her room over here and the thing and she wanted me to add. i'm like what the and i was so stopped for a few minutes and i'm just going neon and i did a little bit of research on pinterest on instagram on tiktok these kids are like loving they're loving it and i have to get around it i'm not going to block myself with this i thought you know what? They look really pretty. Look how pretty. Like I've got this pink on my light. So I look all terrific right now. The girls have the same thing. They've got this pink light, this rope light thing. And they're just like this all over the place. Oh, they they're so cool. far ahead of us. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? What are we going to say? I'm sorry. No, they're so far ahead of us. They really are. I mean, I'm telling you, yeah. I'm telling you I, I absolutely have that. And I was just talking to my office about it. I said, I got to tell you, I want to do more girls rooms. They get the light. Like, yeah. how do you do like this? And you start, start thinking, anyway, how do I add the organic in with this? How do I do the rope light? Next thing you know, the entire office is sitting there researching about rope lights and 
I mean, what a fantastic thing that you have this life. I, I kept thinking like weird, bad 80s basement <laughs> freak guy thing. And then it turned into like, oh my God, that's super cute. Like I just, it's a whole, and that gets back, right? Is it not the same thing as us controlling the light with our um, with our, our nest, what we were just talking about a few minutes ago? I, yeah. Circadian rhythm, circadian lighting. It's actually like a weird pink rope light on a little girl's like canopy bed. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but they're controlling it too. I want to be able to control it. I want it to be light. I want it to be dark. I want it to do this. I want it to be over here. They need moments. They want those little vignettes that they can do and control. And you're looking yeah. at it going, you got it. So I started to add that. Then I started getting into the world of neon. There's these terrific artists coming out of Mexico City that are doing, you've probably seen a little bit with the cool words and the sort of, you know, uplifting comments and in neon. Very cool. I think it's really, really exciting. And so it brings a whole other element back to our work again. It even brought me back to the spa that we're doing at our new house because I realized I can control the light in the spa area in a completely different way than I thought originally. We're working with basements because we're doing an interesting lighting on the ceiling. And anyway, so just yeah, speaking of spa earlier, you mentioned about the, the zero body and I, I just noticed that Russ just joined us. So maybe oh. we can talk about it a little bit. I don't know. But I didn't catch who joined us. See if he'll see if he'll Russ see if he'll Diamond. Um, unmute Russ. himself. Hey, how are you? I've met you a couple times before. I always forget. Where did he go? He was here a minute ago. You, had, you said his name and he was. Eve? Yeah. Oh, I'm here. I'm oh. here. I'm sorry. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> you just got that button, the button of yeah. unmute me. Yeah. Hi. Hey, good to see Hi. you. Sorry, Thanks for I joining. Got, sorry, I got on late. <laughs> oh, it's fine. What's going on? Are you in this? Oh, you have a, is that a, is that a layer? Or are you really in your store? No, I'm, I'm in front of the uh, Jesse Fawcett's here. Uh-huh, sure you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so what is this zero gravity bed? Just so people... Oh my gosh, we were just talking about it, Russ. We're, you just missed it. We were just talking about the bed. No, it's, uh, it's really, a, a, that was an incredible find. Um, it just, uh, it's it's like a big water bed that you float. It's like you're floating. In but it's dry, Russ. It's important to mention that it's dry. It's a dry water bed. It's a dry, dry bed, absolutely. So you can lay it in, in your clothes, in your robe, with nothing. It just, it's up to you. But you can do a session for 20 minutes or an hour. Um, you know, people have even slept in it, but I, they, they don't recommend that. Um, it, is, uh, it is a little bit warm, uh, not hot, just warm. So it's, it's like a waterbed, but you, when you lay on it, you lay on a platform and uh, you press a button, the platform lowers and it's, you're suspended. And it's supposed to replicate like a floating tank. So yeah, it's really special. I mean, I don't think we're doing it any justice. I, I can't imagine what other people must be thinking. Like, wait, it's a board and it's yeah, they're like it's a waterbed. Yeah, <laughs> like you're dry. Like yeah, it's really, so it's, it's amazing. Uh, if you go to the website, obviously you could see it, right? Yeah, um, so of course. Yeah. We actually just did a blog post about it last week, as a matter of fact. No, yeah. and, and actually, you know what? That bed has a lighting component, does it yeah. not? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, I mean, it's a whole, and that's part of this conversation. Yeah. yeah it's, it's uh, it's chromotherapy, although uh, it makes the room look cool. But um, hopefully, yeah. you've got your eyes closed and you're listening to. Um, there's six programs that you can listen to, either focusing on different parts of your body or just different um, sounds that's been curated neurologically, so to to really relax you. And so does so, that mean that? I'm sorry to interrupt. Does that mean that we get into it and I could say like, I'm, I'm, I just want to, I mean, what are some of the options? Is it like a color? Well, thing? Like for instance, they'll tell you to concentrate on your, your ankle and then your calf and then kind of works up your body, you know, so you hear really want a relaxation and different body parts. Um, oh, so the unit speaks also. Yes. Yes. Oh, I see. This is more like the meditation aspect of it. And so they're sort of guiding you through these sort of intentions is what that is. And that some of it's on, you know, whether it be stress or, you know, PTSD or, or your body, like they're the different, like what Russ is talking about, the different body parts. Um, it's sort of like, that's called your body check. It kind of has you go through it and it, it, it instructs you through or guides you through a body check. So well, Marissa wants to say hi to Russ. Is Russ there still? Yeah, I'm, I'm still here. So, yes. Yeah, so, in fact, we just, uh, we had somebody who just purchased one. And um, 
they had floating tanks at their home. The problem is with the floating tank is obviously you got to do without your clothes, but it's just that it's mm -hmm. the preparation and it's the cleanup after it. So when they saw this thing, they, you know, they haven't, we haven't delivered it yet. It's still being made. Uh, it's being shipped. It's made in Italy. Mm -hmm. And um, um, it's actually the, the company that owns it, Starpool, is um, a big investor in their company is Technogym. So if you've seen that really cool state-of-the-art, um, very contemporary um, exercise equipment, they're, they're involved with that too. So it's, it's, it's really, um, it's, it's for, um, it's for somebody who's got um, a wellness center in their home or a gym, you know, if a lot of the homes that we've seen, people are putting in full on gyms and mud rooms and steams and saunas and, and even ice rooms these days. So uh, this is just a, uh, it's used not only in residential, we are the, the very first residential um, um, showroom to sell it, you know, for residential. It's usually, uh, I think I was just told that um, the guy from Italy who runs the program, that Equinox just bought a bunch of them for- Oh, that's great. How fun for you. Wow. Russ, Russ can you see us here? Yes, I can. And Mauricio, you see uh, him? Yeah. Probably known from Russ. the store a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm seeing some people asking questions that they would like to see, uh, um, see what it looks like. So Top Russ, bed. Okay. Hold on. Let me see if I can find one. I'll let you guys yeah. talk while I search. <laughs> well, you, um, if, you, if you pull up, is it still on the blog posting? Actually, yeah. It's for, yeah, there's a video and everything. So I can either do it for everyone if everyone wants me to, or I can, um, or we can just, you guys can go there right after. I can send you a link afterwards. Want to do that, maybe? Yeah, because it's six o'clock now. So I'll just send everyone a link right now afterwards. And you can go to our blog at um, SnyderDiamond.com, Design on Tap, and then... Um, and then you can check out, yeah, it's still there, it's live. So you can read a little more info about it and also see the images. But wow, it is, it's six o'clock. So I think it's probably time that we wrap up. Um, does anyone have any final quick questions or things they wanna say? Or we can probably just call it and um, Thank you so much, Kim, for doing this, for Thanks. taking the time. It was such a great conversation. You have so many amazing um, ideas and your approach to design, I think is is how everybody should be doing it. And I hope, sure. I hope it catches on. I think it's starting to, and you're definitely a pioneer. And we just, we appreciate you and have I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much. I really Thank appreciate you. you guys. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. Much. Thank you, everybody, Bye for everybody. coming. Happy COVID. <laughs> everybody stay healthy. We're continuing to put out um, more at home. And um, hope to see you at more Zoom things that we do and more conversations. Yeah, we're kind of doing like a regular Wednesday now, every Wednesday at five. And then we're going to have like other days in between. I know we're going to do the next one is going to be another meditation. Monday we'll meditation on Monday with Brooke Gardner. Wednesday will be with um, uh, a LA historian with, um, his name's David Silverman, and actually um, sounds fascinating. I mean, he's, he has all the inside scoop on all of these amazing historic homes that are in, in Los Angeles from like Hollywood royalty, that whole era, which is, I'm kind wow, of, that's gonna be so I'm Netflixing fun. that. that it's going to be a so really fun. Perfect timing. So it's going to be a fun conversation. So. I'm going to be that for sure. Yeah, right? yeah. So I look forward to seeing everybody again soon. Thank you very much. Bye, you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have Thanks. a great evening. Take care. Thank you. Bye.